All right, so I have been reading some self-help books since I was 19, 20. I think the first book I ever read was Atomic Habits, which is on this list. And then after that, I read Think Like a Monk and I went down this whole like rabbit hole of like self-help fluff. And I read maybe like 13, 14 books. And then it took me that long to realize that self-help is actually kind of a scam. And in all honesty, it kind of is if you don't take any action. So I have been scouring the internet watching a lot of videos on books that I thought I would be interested in. And I bought a couple of those books and read some of them. But in all honesty, none of those books really helped me pivot from point A to point B of where I wanted to go in life. So I thought, why not sit down, make a video about seven or eight books that actually helped me in my business and in my life and put it together from a Muslim's perspective, you know? So that is what this video is going to be about, guys. Also, if you guys are going to be spending your hard earned money on books and you're going to be spending your time, more importantly, you want to make sure that you're actually getting some benefit out of it. And it's not some fluffy spiritual guru talking about, you know, how to be happier in your day to day life or how to because those are the books that was reading is like how to be happier how to get rid of negativity how to optimize your life 24 7 when i don't even believe in the work-life balance honestly that's a whole nother video in itself balance is bs there is time for offense and there's time for defense and i believe that there's different seasons in life that you can play hard or you can play it easy and you can kind of like sit back relax and whatnot but we are still in the first half of this year and i believe that everyone especially if you're a man you should be working super super hard and dedicated towards your craft and becoming an expert at something without further ado let's hop right into this list so the first book that i have on this list is the way of the superior man and now i don't have the actual copy to show you guys on camera i gave it to a buddy of mine because he was going through a rough time a rough patch he was going through a breakup with his girl and uh, he kind of lost sight of himself as a man and in all honesty when he told me about the relationship of course it was haram and he told me that all these just like bad things were happening to him i told him dude you lost your way as a man so here read this book and we'll get into that but i was like here read this book and call me after you're done reading it and let's talk about it so the author, David Dida, who wrote it, has written a lot of other interesting books. I suggest that you guys don't take everything that he has written as a gospel if you do decide to read this book. And yeah, so this book is basically based in the polarity between the masculine and the feminine. And now if you're someone like me who is very interested in like human psychology and you have a good understanding of relationships, but you want to further your, your understanding on what a woman is supposed to look and feel like and what a man is supposed to look and feel like in the traditional terms of masculine and feminine, then that book is a great start. A lot of people ask me like, oh man, I want to get married. What should I do? I usually tell them, dude, every single man before you get married, you should read The Way of the Superior Man. The author really, really prompts you and asks you questions and really makes you come on the edge of your seat thinking whether or not you're living life to your true potential as a man and if you're really, you know, pursuing your calling. And he also dives into other things about the feminine and how they're more chaotic and emotional in a good way and how the masculine man actually looks at that, kind of chuckles and giggles and looks at the feminine as like this beautiful chaotic thing. So I read that book in the beginning of 2020 and I'm probably going to read it again this year, but it's a very easily digestible way of feeling like your dad is talking to you. If you're someone who struggled with a father figure or you never really had an older brother to kind of mentor you or teach you the way of the world, from a man's perspective, then that book is honestly like a good entry level, I would say. Now, this leads me to my second book on this list, which is Meeting Muhammad by Sheikh Omar Suleiman. Now, I paired this book with The Way of the Superior Man when I was reading it to get the best of both worlds, right? Because The Way of the Superior Man was so polarizing, I needed to make sure that I wasn't getting swayed in the wrong direction. So in order to do that, I read this book, Meeting Muhammad. This book is a very, very good entry level book as well to the lifestyle and then just the characteristic of the prophet, peace be upon him. This book book essentially is a compilation of interactions that people had with the prophet peace be upon him when he was living. Now you can learn a lot from someone just by studying the way that they interact with other people and this book is exactly that. In life I only have a very few role models and the prophet peace be upon him is always at the top of that list. So when reading this book it's very easy to implement the characteristics of the prophet peace be upon him in your day-to-day -day life because now that you're reading a book that's based on his life and then you go out in the world and you live your life and then you can kind of draw the parallels between him and yourself and in all honesty I think it's the easiest way to live like the prophet peace be upon him because it's like reading about an older brother or a father. Now one of my favorite things about this book is that Sheikh Omer opens the book with his appearance. When discussing someone and whenever telling a story about someone and kind of like going in excessive detail about someone I think it's really cool to kind of have the appearance and the demeanor to be the first thing that you learn about because now when you read the further chapters and you're reading further more into this person's personality you have like a physical image in your head of what you can kind of get at how this person looks and the prophet peace be upon him was the most documented man in history. We know everything from how he 
he ate, to how he slept, to how he thought, to how he prayed. Literally everything under the sun that a human being does. So while this book doesn't have all of it, but it gives you a good entry into his lifestyle. And I can't help but feel a lot closer to our creator when I was reading this book, because when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the prophet peace be upon him so, so much, and you're understanding what this man looked like and what he acted like, subhanAllah, it just makes you feel a lot closer to the prophet peace be upon him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they are the center of your life. You know, whenever you are worshiping Allah and you're always thinking about someone who worshiped him perfectly, your mind goes straight to the prophet. When you're learning how he did it and you're learning what his connection was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's just, you feel so close to him. Okay, now following the theme of male figures and masculinity and manhood and all that stuff, the next book that I have on the list is 44 Ways to manhood that's based on breaking old habits and building new personalities and this book is actually based on the quran and the sunnah which is my favorite part because this book is only 100 pages long and funny story my sister when i moved out of my hometown she knew that i needed some guidance so shout out to my sister for gifting me this when i turned 21 and uh, this book opened my eyes to a lot of things because the way that the author has this laid out is he has 11 essentials that he talks about that a man should have and then 33 suggestions totaling in 44 of course so 44 ways to manhood hence the title. Some of the essentials are sincerity to Allah, knowledge of monotheism, consistent worship, obedient children, having a pious wife, good hygiene, excellent manners. So it's basically just like the bare bones and fundamentals of what makes up a good, nice man, you know? And then he backs it up with a lot of the Quran and the Sunnah. So it's really cool because he talks about every single chapter on why we should do it and then how we can go about doing it correctly. And then the 33 essentials is honestly just like reminders and things that you should know in the deen. So not only does this book do a lot of good for yourself, but it gives you good understanding of what you should look for in friends and in your spouse as well. I get that question a lot, especially after I got married is, Yusuf, what should I look for in a wife? What should I look for in a man? In all honesty, bro, read this book and it'll give you like a good understanding of like what the baseline should look like in a person. It's a book that every time I look at, it just brings a smile to my face, knowing where it came from and knowing what it does to me. <laughs> it's good to have books that are based in the Quran and the Sunnah because you know that it's basically fail proof and it's bulletproof and you know that you can follow this. It's 100% correct. That's a good thing about these books. Now, moving on, I have some business books that I want to talk to you guys about. This is a book that I'm currently reading and a book that I wish I read earlier. It's called Expert Secrets by Mr. Russell Brunson. This book is all about how to monetize your online presence and how to leverage your online presence in the business world. So it's basically converting your online visitors into paying customers. This book is just full of frameworks and I'm starting to realize that a lot of the times in business and in life, you are basically just conveying frameworks. That's essentially what you're doing. When you're running an agency model, whether you have a service-based business or anything like that, you're basically just presenting a framework on a golden platter to other businesses and other people and saying, hey, I can do this for you and I can do it great, pay me this amount of money. So in this book, Expert Secrets, Mr. Brunson talks about exactly how to do that and his frameworks on doing that. And it's really cool because he also talks about making sure that you're connected with your core and you're not doing it from an evil standpoint. It's pretty cool to kind of see someone talk about business in an ethical point of view and gives you like the insight on how he did it. And yeah, I mean, I've been pretty open about my switch in attention towards from going from influencer to being more of like an agency owner. So I've started on my own agency as of three, four days ago, since the last video went live. And um, since then I've been cold calling to, <laughs> honestly, that's, that's another video. That's another video in and of itself, but I saw my first client. I want to share that whole story with you guys, maybe in another video. A lot of things I learned from this book, but that leads me to my next book because just as important as this book is, I'm reading this book by Mr. Hermosi, $100 million offers. If you don't know sales, pick this book up and just read it, man. It's funny because I actually haven't read this book. I listen to the audiobook whenever I go on my long walks in the evening after dinner. I'm already halfway through the book. Honestly, audiobooks are such a life hack. Even though this video is all about books, if you don't have the time in your day to read books, then audiobooks is a great alternative for you to listen to. Just make sure, you know, you do it outdoors and you're not just sitting in your room. Go out, go for a walk, do it in the gym. If this book in specific, I don't listen to it in the gym because in the gym, I get distracted with the weights or people coming up to me. I want to make sure that I'm focused heavy into the book and what Mr. Hamozi is teaching me whenever I'm listening to this book. So I just keep it specifically for my walks. Now it's funny because these two books, I've learned so much more in these two books that I have in any business lecture that I sat in during my time in college before I dropped out. Yeah, they're like 15, 20 bucks a pop and it's a lot cheaper than a semester. And it just kind of goes to show that college doesn't really know what the heck they're doing when it comes to business. It's a lot better to learn from the people in the field and learn in real time what they're doing, the systems that they're doing. And then just like things are always changing so, so quick. $100 million offers it basically in a nutshell, it teaches you how to make an offer so good that people can't say no. It really dives deep into the value proposition and what exactly is 
value because everyone knows that value is good. Value is good. Value is good. But what is the actual definition in business of value? So the next book that I have on this list is Relentless by Tim Grover. And this book is absolutely soaked up. I've dropped water on it. I've taken it into the sauna. I've taken it into the steam room. And the reasoning because is like when I started reading this book, I was absolutely hooked. Tim Grover is the mindset coach of Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Dwayne Wade, just really significant figures in the athlete space, I guess you can say. Now his role at that he played as his coach were he was responsible for taking them from being good to great to being unstoppable. In the book, he breaks down there's three categories of people in life. You have the coolers, the closers, and the cleaners, right? So you have the people who are just the coolers in life that kind of just sit on the sidelines and go with the flow. And then after that, you have the closers, people you can rely on, someone that you can hire to get the job done. You know that you can rely on them and you know that you can count on them to get the job done, right? But they're not really going to really push themselves beyond that. And then the third category, which is what he really, really emphasizes on this book, people like Michael Jordan, people like Kobe Bryant, people that are relentless. And he categorizes them as the cleaners, right? People who are when you're thinking of step one and step two, they're thinking of step 100 and step 1000, right? So they're so much further ahead in the game. And it's really cool to kind of see a mindset coach behind that mental structure and kind of see how he breaks down his frameworks and what he talks about. And it's really cool to kind of have that type of insight. So I will say that I started reading this book in the beginning of this year and I had to stop. <laughs> I had to stop in Ramadan because this book was so strong in my head that if I wasn't operating at 110% capacity in my life, then I would feel a little bit guilty for not being able to push myself that much. Now in Ramadan, as a lot of you may know, I shut everything down and I just focus on my ibadah and I focus on my salah and I focus on my tarawih. I try my best to not focus on the world and not to focus on business. So I'm going to start picking up this book now more often and finishing the book. I have... I don't even know where I stopped. I think I stopped 100 pages in. I got hooked to this book, dude. I got freaking addicted to reading this book. And a lot of you guys ask how to stay motivated, how to stay disciplined. Honestly, this book will get you through it. And it's just crazy because you look at the back and the testimonials that this guy has from Michael Jordan, Dwayne Wade, Pat Riley, and then just other coaches in this space. It's just, it's just really cool. Now, the last book that I have in this list is probably one of the most important. And you're going to find this book in a lot of shelves in the homes of converts in the homes of people that are interested in Islam, and that is The Clear Quran by Dr. Khattab. This book is a thematic English translation of the Quran, so God's word, and it is just extremely, extremely, extremely easy to digest. I was always intimidated by different translation books growing up, and I always didn't feel curiosity to explore those types of books. But when I came across this book, just seeing how nice and thin it is, and even just opening it up, and I'm actually able to read the English inside of it, and it's not like low thou art, like super old English. Like Alhamdulillah, like everything in this book is really easily digestible. So if you do have a favorite surah, or if you're just someone who wants to look into the wisdom behind the holy words of the Quran, then the clear Quran is definitely, definitely a great place to start. This is the book that I usually keep on my desk. So whenever I want to take a break or after my salahs, I usually just reach over, grab this book, and I try to read at least one or two pages from it. This is honestly the book that made me fall in love with Surah Taha because in Surah Taha, Allah SWT, he has a direct conversation with Musa alayhi salam and he tells Musa alayhi salam to go to Fir'aun, who was a tyrant at the time. I'm sure all of you guys watching know him. So he told him to go and talk to Pharaoh and call him towards the right path. So knowing how strong Pharaoh was and how big of a tyrant, how much power he held at that time, Musa obviously asks for the support and for the guidance of Allah in the form of a dua. I'm even getting goosebumps just like thinking about it now. Whenever I recite Surah Taha, I'm listening to myself recite it or I'm listening to anyone else and I'm listening to the words and I'm leading up to that point knowing that, wow, these are literally words that Musa alayhi salam has asked from Allah and Allah has kept it inside of the Quran. It's just something so so impactful and powerful for me, at least. I've had a lot of childhood traumas growing up and just like really, really hard times being separated from family from my young age. And there were definitely moments where I was talking to Allah in moments of darkness, in moments of like solitude. Maybe one day I'll go in depth talking about what the heck happened in New York. Yeah, there was just basically just moments in my life where I can relate to Musa alayhi salam talking to Allah, asking him for strength and asking him for guidance and whatnot. So the clear Quran is, uh, I have two copies of these. Yeah, I just urge you guys to pick one up if you do have the chance and you do want to deepen your relationship with Uncle Quran and with Allah's word because it's crazy that we have God's word with us on earth. 
and then we have someone like Dr. Musaf Khattab who can give such a beautiful way of explaining what is inside the Quran and uh, I don't know I think we're living in a time where there's a luxury of high quality information and we're kind of numb to that type of stuff you know all right ladies and gentlemen so those are the books that actually actually helped me in my business and in my life and books that I will probably go back to every single year reading because they are not only great reads written by cool people and they are pretty much fundamentals of life that you can learn from so although all of these books may be super cool to read and talk about and make videos about if you do not take action after reading these books then you are exactly where you were before you even read the book because you can't change your life by reading books but you can change your life by taking the information from these books and applying them to your experiences and to your actions in real life and that is how you can succeed in whatever chosen pursuit that you have as always you guys know that rome wasn't built in a day and neither will you keep your head down because patience is a virtue i'm praying for you